Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a wonderful day it is today and what lovely faces I see today. Lord, I pray that your love will flow in every heart in Jesus' name. And I pray that the name of Jesus will do wonders in every life. Great, mighty things you will do to the glory of that name in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every need you will meet. Every mountain you roll away. And every one you turn around by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Open the scriptures to every heart. And Lord, we pray there will be faith to receive everything you give us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15 all through to verse 20. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to tell me every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are there believers in the house today? Praise the Lord. The signs will follow us in Jesus' name. The signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Notice that. In my name. Notice that. In my name. I mean, have you noticed some religious people in some religious denominations? They carry the names of the pastor of their church. And they pray the name of the pastor of their church. In my name. Jesus said. Other people carry the picture of the leader of their church, the founder of their church. And then they look at that picture and they make it an idol. But Jesus said, in my name, they shall cast out devils who believe in that name today. No evil spirit will have any power in your life in Jesus' name. And then it says in that verse 17, it says, they shall speak with new tongues. Holy Ghost power will come upon your life. A new tongue, a new language, a new love, and a new perspective, and a new intelligence, a new wisdom will come to you in Jesus' name. Then it says, and they shall take up serpents. That means any serpentine spirit, any serpentine power, any kind of snake power that tries to get into your life in the day or in the dream, you'll crush them in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say that if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Poisons will be neutralized in your life. Anybody that puts anything down and he says, let her come, let him come. When he steps on that thing, finished. Your enemies have finished, not you. Because anything you step upon, everything will be neutralized in Jesus' name. And they shall lay hands on the sick and tell me what will happen. They shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, were told in the word of God, he was received up into heaven. And then he sat on the right hand side of God. And they went forth like you are going forth. I said, You are going forth. You go forth, you go far, you go further, and you are going to make progress in Jesus' name. And he preached everywhere, and then it says, The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I'm talking to you on the power of Jesus' name. The power of Jesus' name. In the mouth of a young person or older person, the name of Jesus has power. You'll see the power in your life today and all through your life in Jesus' name. The power of Jesus' name. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 12. Here is what the Lord Jesus Christ pointedly and purposefully said unto all his disciples, young and old. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater, greater, greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You know, there are some young people, anytime we read that, they transfer that to the pastor. 
but he says he that believes on me anytime we read that many people they transfer that to their parents daddy and mommy will do wonders of course i know your daddy your mommy they will do wonders in jesus name but now it says he that believeth on me whether you are young or you are old whether you are a teenager you're in your 50s whatever wonders will never stop in your life in jesus name i'm going to read that again with the understanding that the lord is talking to you say the lord is talking to me look at this verily verily assuredly assuredly it says pointedly it says very clearly plainly it says verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me or she that believeth on me anyone that believes on me a young man believes on me a young lady believes on me a, an older man believes on me he that believeth on me the works i do he shall do the works i do he shall do it will happen I said it will happen. And then he said, Greater was than this shall do because I go unto my father. And then he says in verse 13, Whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever. What's the meaning of whatsoever? I said, What's the meaning of whatsoever? Anything and everything, whatsoever, I believe whatsoever is going to happen. I said, I believe whatsoever is going to happen. It says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. That's it. In my name. Not in the name of your pastor. In my name. Not in the name of a religious man. In my name. Not in the name of somebody who died and, you know, is forgotten already. But in my name, in the name of Jesus, it says, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son he repeats that again in verse 14 and he says if ye shall ask anything in my name tell me the rest i will do it you'll do it in your life in jesus name i'm going to talk to you on uh, three points number one is power on all our nature is power on all our nature if there's anything that troubles us it's our nature it's not what is outside us it's what is inside us and you know some people they fight the enemy outside they don't fight the enemy inside they say such and such is holding me down no nobody can hold you down if something within your nature within you is not holding you down they say such and such is discouraging me not at all there's nobody that can discourage you it's the sin inside you it's the nature inside you when you run it's your nature that prompts you to run when you stand it's your nature within that prompts you to stand when you say i'm going to school it's your nature it's what's within you it's not an external thing i can motivate you but it's your nature that accepts the motivation i can encourage you it's your nature that accepts the encouragement or somebody can discourage you it's your nature that agrees with that discouragement if you say this nature is going to be have the power of christ manifested on it nothing will stop you in jesus name in fact i can tell you if your nature is unstoppable you are unstoppable if your nature cannot be hindered then you cannot be hindered it's not the boy outside there it's not the girl outside there that makes you to fail and fall it's the nature within and that nature within today is going to have the manifestation of the power of god in jesus name point number one is power on all our nature notice the word all there that means every part of our nature every part of our nature that everything that brings defeat in your life i clear it up today in jesus name point number two now is provision for all our needs is provision for all our needs you know we have different kinds of needs we have a need here you need here, you need here. all our needs is provision for all our needs they are supplied today they are provided today i want a wonderful thing that you know if what you need is visible in supply it's invisible in supply if it's material in supply if it's spiritual in supply if it's psychological in supply if it's courage you need in supply if it's money can you supply money 
of course he will and any of his wisdom intelligence anything you need is provision for all our needs number three now our praying all in his name our praying all in his name everything we pray every time we pray it's all in the name of jesus i'm coming to number one what's number one again is power on all our nature uh, look at this now in second um, ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 2 and we're looking at here from verse 1 it says and you are see quickened that means you are see made alive come alive it transformed us it made us to come alive who are dead in trespasses and sins before we met the lord were dead in trespasses and sins dead in trespasses and sins you know there are people that fear maybe they fear a dagger there's something ter more terrible than a dagger there's some people fear a sword there's something more terrible than a sword there's some people that fear a poison there's something more more terrible than poison and the people that fear witches and wizards they will kill me they will kill me if there's anything that kills anyone it is sin because it says we're dead in sins and trespasses actually you should fear fornication more than you fear a sword you should fear lying more than you fear a gun you should fear all those trespasses and sins all the deception and all the evil more than you fear any material thing that can kill you because you see when you are born again when you are saved, when you're a child of god your life is secured in god and nobody can cut down your life in Jesus' name. If there's anything that can cut short your life, it is sin. That's why it says, and you are sick, quicken, who are dead in sins and trespasses. Then it says, look at this in verse 2, wherein in time past, you walked according to the cause of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air. Then it says, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all add a conversation, a conduct, a character. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind and whereby tell me and whereby tell me out loud say that again we were by nature the children of wrath even as others everybody had that terrible nature that was the nature we had before but a change has happened I said a change has happened. And what brought the change? Let me tell you, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, what's the verse again? 17. Therefore, if any man, if any boy, if any girl be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. A new creature. What does that mean? Number one a converted nature a converted nature you, so, you see it's our nature that breaks us down it's our nature that defeats us it's our nature that breaks the failure it's our nature that breaks the defeat it's our nature a corrupt nature that even brings the sickness it's our nature that breaks all those things upon our lives but now it says if any boy any girl anyone be in Christ he is a new creature there is number one a converted nature number two that's a cleansed nature that's a cleansed nature and you know sometimes if you have the experience of working with a particular machine the machine is dirty and a lot of maybe sand or dirt or mud or whatever and it's like you know the teeth of the machine is not sharp enough because of all those the debris and the dirt and everything and then you see it looks like we need to turn this thing up we need to cleanse it and when you wash it and cleanse it and use all the things you need to do and then turn on the machine now it's like new that's like our nature when the dirty things are there the sins are there the evil things fornication 
education there, immorality there, the lying there, the occultic uh, practices there. It's like everything is so dirty, it will not work. But then the blood of Jesus comes and the name of Jesus is applied and the power of the cross is applied in that nature. There's a cleansed nature. And then you turn on that thing now, I'm telling you that that nature will work now. And your nature will work well in Jesus' name. Number one is a converted nature. Number two is a cleansed nature. Number three is a compliant nature. Compliant nature. When we say compliant, it means that it is yielding. It means that it's cooperating. You are complying with the Lord because it says go this way and you go that way, you meet success. It says go this way, you go that way and you meet exaltation. It says go this way and because you are compliant. It's now a softened nature, a submissive nature, a compliant nature because that is what the Lord does when you come to know the Lord. But when you have not known the Lord, your nature is not compliant. It's confrontational. Your nature is not compliant. It's contradictory. So, no, I cannot go that way. No, I cannot do that. You will not submit to the Lord when that dead old nature is there. But thank God in the name of Jesus, there's a new nature in Jesus' name. Number one, I said it's a converted nature. Number one, give that to me again. Number two, what is that? Number three, what's that? A compliant, that's yielding, cooperative nature. Number four now is a controlled nature. Controlled nature. Have you seen people that, you know, their nature, once you know, a little trigger, a little thing happens, they cannot control that nature. It flares up, it gets angry, it gets into boxing, it gets into this and that. And people say, ah, what's the matter with you? That little thing, you know, it's like they're set on fire. And the fire that is burning will burn down every, every everything they built up before they get angry like this and they burn down their career they burn down their friendship they burn down their relationship they talk and talk and talk the fire has come until the fire burns down everything they constructed everything they built since they started building they will not stop it's then when everything is burnt down they'll say why did i say that why did i do that why did i go that direction why did i burn down everything I ever constructed but now when this name of Jesus with his mighty power comes upon your life there is a controlled nature and your nature now comes under control you know when to talk and you know what to say you know where to go and you know when to go there you know what to do and how long you should do that thing your life is under control it's happening today I said it's happening today. You know, there are people that I go to church, I go to church. Uh, by the way, going to church, what is church? Is church a building? The church is the people of God. And they just say, I'm a member of this church, I'm a member of that church. And they don't have any control on their nature. Their tongue, there's no control. Their eyes, there is no control. Their hands, there's no control. Their feet, there's no control. Tell me then, if he doesn't have a controlled nature and he still has that uncontrollable nature, a kind of violent nature a kind of fiery nature how has he known the Lord the power of the Lord will change everything in our nature today in Jesus name number five a committed nature a committed nature you know, there are people they cannot commit to anything they cannot commit to anyone and uh, they, can, they cannot say I'm making a commitment I'm going to study no commitment at all I'm making a commitment I'm going to read through the Bible there's no commitment at all I'm making a commitment I'll not just be a kind of lo-fi in the church I'm going to work for the Lord in the church I'm, I'm making a commitment I'm going to do this I'm going to keep the faith they don't have any commitment they're just like that their nature is like you know the devil has tied a rope on their leg and when they want to go like this, the devil will put the rope in each other. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, devil. I didn't know that you want me to go forward. And then when they want to go this way, the devil will pull the rope again. And you, they're under control of the devil. But you know, when you come like this to Jesus Christ, He manifests His power. You'll be under control in Jesus' name. What you say will be under control. The places you go will be under control, and the things you do will be under control. This is a controlled nature. And a, com and a committed nature, you commit yourself to something good, it will happen. I said it will happen. Yeah.
<laughs> you know, some people, when they, when they start school, they say, I'm going to be a doctor. And, you know, sometimes, and if you're going to be a doctor, that takes commitment. It means you are committed to this and that thing you are committed to. Or you get to university level, you say, I'm going to make a first class. So make a first class commitment. It means I'm committed to this. And if you can bring that power of Christ upon your life, and there's a, and there's a converted nature, you bring that power of Christ, and there's a cleansed nature, you bring that power of Christ, a compliant nature, and there's a control committed nature, I'm telling you, you are unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And I want to tell you, if the unstoppable comes with the immovable, think about it, the unstoppable comes with the immovable that is the thing is just standing there it just staying there it just it's a block it's a hindrance it's something that says i am here i am here and then something is coming it's a bulldozer and that bulldozer does not once he says forward go does not does have any reverse gear and it's just unstoppable unstoppable which one will yield i said which one will yield that thing that is there that is not moving that's why i'm saying whatever wants to stop you if the nature inside you if the spirit inside you if the soul inside you if the conscience inside you if the character of christ inside you it transferred that unstoppable nature into you everything in your way the better clear up because you are unstoppable there's nothing that will stop you in jesus name i'm going to be unstoppable I said I'm going to be unstoppable. Far back there, I want to hear you, everybody in front, in the middle, everywhere. I am unstoppable. You'll be unstoppable in Jesus' name. It is the change that comes through Jesus Christ in our soul, in our spirit, that makes us unstoppable. Number six, in conquered nature, a conquered nature. That is Christ coming and he conquers everything negative there. And all the, all the strongholds of the devil, he pulls everything down and then you have that conquered nature. Number seven, a Christ-like nature. A Christ-like nature. A Christ-like nature. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Praise the Lord, that is my portion. I said, praise the Lord, that's my portion. That's why when you look for me next year, you'll find me, I've gone higher. I say when you look for me next year, you'll find out I have gone higher. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Where are you there? When I look for you next time, next year, I will find out you have gone. You'll be higher in Jesus' name. Number two. Now, what's number two? Remind me again. Number two. <laughs> you know, and they say, don't you have it on your paper? Of course, I just want to know there are some they never take notes. You know, the teacher, the lecturer is talking and talking and talking. They'll be looking at the lecturer like this, and the teacher like this, as if uh, the success is on the face of the teacher. As if the, you know, passing the exam is on the face of the, they just, they open their mouths and they're looking like this, but you know, the wise students, they, when the teacher is talking, they're doing something. What are they doing? I said, what are they doing? That's why I love the youth, you know. If they give me permission, you know, from that side, I'll just stay here and say that this is the place to say. Because, you know, you put everything down. And what you put down on your nose will be transferred into your heart in Jesus' name. Give me number. I just like to hear your voice. Pardon me. I just like to hear you tell me point number two again. His provision for all our needs. I just want to remind you that all your needs are provided in Jesus' name. 
so we're looking at philippians chapter 4 philippians chapter 4 verse 19 but my god shall supply tell me the next word there all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus all 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 ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 look at this blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with, tell me the next word there, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every time it says all, why is it you are limited when it says all our needs are supplied, all spiritual blessings are given unto us. I'm looking at number three now, Second Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Are you there already? I said, are you there? And it says, and God is able to make, what's the next word? All grace abound towards you that she, what's the next word there? Always having, and the next word there, all sufficiency. Look at that, look at that. You're always having all sufficiency. You're always having all sufficiency. Any exam that you are going to do, all sufficiency of intelligence available. Any mountain you want to climb, all sufficiency of strength is available. Any course you want to take, all sufficiency of money is available. Because it says, it has given all ways, all, having all sufficiency, and then go, it goes on in that verse 8, having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You will never lack again. Well, number one, all your need supplied. Number two, all spiritual blessings supplied. Number three, all grace and all sufficiency. And now, number four, all possibilities in your life. All possibilities in your life. I didn't hear you respond to that. Yes. Give me a good, good amen. We're looking at Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, that man is no more here, is now saying to me. I said, is now saying to me. I said, is now saying to me. And Jesus said unto him, verse 23, it says, If thou canst believe, praise the Lord, I am that believer. I said, praise the Lord, I'm that believer. Wake me up in the morning, I'm a believer. Wake me up in the, you know, any time, I'm a believer. You know, there are some people, they think that we're only believers when we are in the church service. They say, praise the Lord, I'm a believer now. But you know, on Monday in the morning, on Tuesday in the morning, it's like, what are you now? <laughs> they say, I don't know, there's all this unbelief. Well, if you're a believer, you're a believer. Are you only the boys? Where are the boys here today? I said, where are the boys here today? No, you are men now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm looking for the boys. I'm looking for the boys. Are you only a boy on Sunday morning? Are you a boy on Saturday? I said, are you a boy on Saturday? I about Friday. But the day when the exam is starting, are you still a boy? Okay, I, you know, I hear you little, but are the girls around here today? Yeah. I, I, I knew you'd wake up. The girls, are you there today? Yeah. Are you only a girl on Sunday? No. The point I'm making is, if you're a girl, you're a girl every day. If you're a boy, you're a boy every day. If you're a believer, are you only a believer on Sunday? No. Any believer there today? Where, where are they? Believers. And look at this in verse 23. It says, if thou canst believe, thank God I am a believer. Then tell me the next word there. Tell me the next word there. All things are possible to him that believeth. Whether it is Friday or Saturday, Sunday or Monday, or it's Tuesday or Wednesday, it is Thursday. It says all things are possible to him and to her that believes. You are a believer. All things will be possible in your life in Jesus' name. And then all the promises. Think about that. You look at your Bible and say all the promises are yours. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 
and we're reading from verse 20 second Corinthians chapter 1 and I'm reading here from verse 20 it says it says that for all the promises of God in him are ye and in him amen unto the glory of God by us it says all the promises of God are yes for me they are yes for you and they are all there and then number six all things everybody say all things we're looking at Romans chapter 8 verse 32 Romans chapter 8 verse 32 and you'll see that i'm not the one putting the word all there it's already there in the bible number one all your needs supplied number two all spiritual blessings given number three all grace and all sufficiency number four all possibilities number five all the promises and now number six all things let's look at romans chapter 8 verse 32 romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all all, for us all how shall he not with him also give us what all things they are there that's it again all things they are yours in jesus name and now ephesians this is beautiful ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 and verse 20 ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 and to know the love of christ which passeth knowledge that she might be filled with tell me all the fullness of God. See what's available for you. And there are some people that live like orphans in this world. There are some people, they say they are believers, but they say, I have nothing. I can do nothing. I cannot go anywhere because uh, this, because of that. And you have all the fullness of God. That's why it says in verse 20 now. Everybody say now. now. There's something happening now. I say there's something happening now. And it's happening to and it's happening to you. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. You see, all power is available for you. And all possibilities are there. And all the blessings are there. And all the goodness of God is there for you. Why should you ever be sorrowful? I pray, Lord, I pray the Lord that all this is will sink in your spirit in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able, my God is able. I said, my God is able. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. All that we ask or think. All that we ask or think. According to the power that walketh. Where is the power working now? In me, in us. It's going to work in Jesus' name. Point number three. Our praying all in the name of Jesus. Our praying all in the name of Jesus. Our praying all in the name of Jesus. I'm looking at uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 21 and see what the Lord does here. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name. Give me that name, Jesus, for he shall save, he shall save his people from their sins. That's where salvation comes in. He shall save his people from their sins. That's where sanctification holiness purity of heart that's where it comes in that's where freedom from sin comes in because he shall save his people he doesn't save them and put them into sin he doesn't save them and drop them back into the well he saves them out of their sins he takes them out of sin and he takes sin out of them salvation and sanctification and holiness holiness of heart Holiness of mind, holiness in character, holiness through and through. That's what he does in the Holy One of Israel. And because of that, he brings holiness in our lives. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Don't tell me you are a child of God if you are still chewing sin every day like chewing string gum. 
and he said you don't tell me you're a believer that you believe on the name of the lord jesus christ if that name has no power to deliver you from sin he shall save his people from their sins and then he sanctifies those who are saved he purifies those who are saved he takes us away from sin he will do it for you in jesus name i'm looking at romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 and i'm reading here from verse 18 being then made free from sin you see that being then made free from sin some people say i'm a child of god i'm still fighting <laughs> i never knew about that I'm, I'm a child of god i'm still telling lies i don't know about that i'm still a child of god but i have a sin partner i don't know about that one the people who are saved and the people who are children of god being them made free from sin and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free in jesus name religion without salvation will not take us anywhere religion without freedom from sin will not take us anywhere activity without the unction without the anointing that breaks the yoke of sin in our lives will not take us anywhere it is the salvation that jesus brings that makes us christians makes us believers and then we can say praise the lord christ came into my heart and he saved me from sin look at that verse 18 again being then me free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness look at verse 22 there it says but now be made free from sin ye became servants to god and ye have your fruit unto what's the next word there beautiful word holiness holiness means wholeness that means your spirit is whole your mind is whole your character is whole and you become christ-like and then it says we have a fruit unto holiness and then it says and the end everlasting life we pray in the name of jesus because that's the name that delivers us from sin that's the name that saves us that's the name that sanctifies us that's the name that makes us holy that's the name that makes us to have the beautiful righteous character of the lord jesus christ he'll do it for you in jesus name i can't hear that amen now amen. we're looking at john chapter 14 john chapter 14 and i'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14 it says and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name and the first thing to ask is salvation if you are not born again and after you are born again the next thing to ask is sanctification holiness of heart and life and then this new nature that christ gives us and it gives us it, it removes the stony heart the stubborn heart and it gives us the heart of flesh it says and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name it says that i will do if you shall ask anything salvation if you shall ask anything healing if you shall ask anything deliverance you shall ask anything sanctification if you shall ask anything the power the baptism the immersion in the holy ghost if you shall ask anything in my name i will do it he will do it in our lives in jesus name let's read john chapter 15 verse 16 john chapter 15 verse 16 it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you by the way why did christ choose those disciples and why will christ choose anyone he chooses us to come and do his will not to do our will he chooses us to come and follow his footsteps if we're following his footsteps there'll be no fornication if we're following his footsteps there'll be no stealing if we're following his footsteps there'll be no fighting if we're following his footsteps we we'll live right we we'll live upright he called us he chose us not to serve the devil how will christ choose us to keep on serving the devil how will christ choose us to keep on worshiping idols how will christ choose us us to see following a way that is wrong he chooses us so that we'll follow the way of the lord and we'll live righteous lives and holy lives beautiful righteous lives it will happen in jesus name he says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and then he says and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit that's it fruit of repentance and the fruit of restitution and the fruit of righteousness he had chosen us to bear fruit and then he says that whatsoever he shall ask in my name that 
he will do he will do it in jesus name i said he'll do it in jesus name and then in john chapter 16 verse 23 john chapter 16 i'm looking at verse 23 john chapter 16 verse 23 and in that day you shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you whatsoever 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 ye shall ask the father in my name whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name we only ask what is precious to us what's important to us some people all they're asking for i'm asking for success i'm asking for success if you have success you don't have salvation what happens to you if you have success and the bible says without holiness no man shall see the lord if you have success you don't have sanctification what will happen to you we must ask for those important things salvation because the very first thing that's important in our lives is that i know i'm saved i know i'm born again i know i'm a child of god and i know that if jesus comes ah i'll go with him you'll go with him in jesus name but how do we go with christ when he comes if there's no salvation only success and success and success if there's success and there's fornication there's success there's lying there's success there's cheating there's success there's explode there's success and there is you know all these occultic no the success must go along with salvation must go along with sanctification must go along with following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord that's why it tells us there that you have not asked many things until now but now ask and shall be given you that your joy may be full your joy will be full in jesus name in colossians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 16 and verse 17 it says in verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom then it says teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all tell me do all tell me out loud tell me again in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god and the father by him whatsoever you do do it in the name of jesus can you tell lies in the name of jesus can you steal in the name of jesus can you commit fornication in the name of jesus can you go to the night club in the name of jesus no you can't do that if it's done in the name of jesus it will be righteous if it's done in the name of jesus there will be holiness if it's done in the name of jesus there'll be purity of heart and purity of life and there'll be good character and you say whatsoever whatsoever you do in word and indeed you do all everything in the name of the lord jesus and giving glory unto him and giving thanks unto him him. Our, our prayer must be in the name of Jesus and whatever we ask in the name of Jesus will be granted in Jesus name I said will be granted in Jesus name see the 12 apostles they went out and when they went out they prayed in the name of Jesus silver and gold have I none but in the name of Jesus rise up and walk see the 70 as the 70 went out they returned and they said Jesus even the devils are subject to us in thy name is the name of Jesus and as we ask that name is still there that name will never lose its power in Jesus name take the name of Jesus with you anywhere you go and then when you want to pray take that name with you and that name will work wonders in your life in Jesus name are you ready to pray in that name I said are you ready to pray in that name I said are you ready to pray today okay now get up and close your close your eyes and pray because you see all these provisions that are made that are given unto us we get them we get them through the name of jesus open your mouth there's power in that name there's power in that name all possibilities in that name answers to prayer in that name there's salvation in that name there's holiness in that name there's righteousness in that name there's pure conscience in that name and there is the ability to make restitution 
and it is in that name it's in that name open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer and you'll have a converted nature when you pray in that name you'll have um, a kind of you have a changed nature you have a cleansed nature when you pray in that name and you will have a compliant nature not a kind of nature that's supposed to god and fighting with god and fighting the purpose of god and fighting the plan of god and fighting the doctrines of the bible you have a compliant nature when you are born again and when the name of jesus works mightily in your life i about a controlled nature a controlled tongue a controlled character a controlled behavior when you have that name the name of jesus and you have a committed nature you'll be able to commit yourself to the lord completely consecrate yourself to the lord completely saying oh lord here am i oh lord here am i i consecrate i lay everything on the altar i commit myself i lay everything on your altar i'm going to live to the glory of your name it is the name of jesus that does that effects that accomplishes that impacts that into our lives coming all these years and not born again that's not good coming all these years and there's no converted nature that's not good coming all these years and there's no compliant nature there's no submissive nature that's not good tell the lord today is the day the day of conversion the day of conversion the day of cleansing and the day of a change of heart a change of life a change of tongue a change of behavior a change of language a change in your attitude and a change in your disposition it changes your character and conduct and remember it makes provision for all our needs makes provision for all our needs our spiritual needs it makes provision for our salvation our moral needs it makes provision for sanctification holiness without which no man shall see the lord Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. What are you going to do with success in hell? What are you going to do with certificate in hell? Salvation, 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 the number one thing you must have. ye must be born again ye must be born again except a boy except a girl be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god since you've been coming have you given your life to the lord has he converted you if anyone be in christ is a new new creature old things old behavior old character old attitude is passed away and all things have become new healing is great healing is wonderful healing without holiness where does it lead us to deliverance wonderful where does deliverance lead to without doctrine tell the lord all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible we can live right when christ lives on the inside of us follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man no boy no girl shall see the lord in jesus name we pray if i still have you there i said in jesus name we pray are you ready for me to pray now why don't you raise up your father in the name of jesus we thank you today because you have called us to this place so that something supernatural will happen in every nature and i pray lord the name of jesus will bring a transformation in every life in jesus name 
the good thing you have done in this youth and church over here at the headquarters you have lifted them up so much i pray they will never come down in jesus name Lord, I pray every dream you put in their heart, every desire you put in their heart, every destination you put in their heart, by the name of Jesus, by the power of your spirit, they will reach there in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, there can be no sickness where there's holiness. There can be no infirmity where there's sanctification. I pray, oh Lord, you put your holiness in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name a converted nature oh lord a cleansed nature oh lord a compliant nature oh lord a controlled nature oh lord a conquered nature oh lord oh lord i pray a christ-like nature give unto everyone in jesus name and all the needs of our lives all the needs of our lives i pray you will supply all spiritual blessings to grant to everybody all the possibilities to make in everybody all grace and all sufficiency in all things give unto everybody in jesus name and lord as we come to you i just pray that you will lift these children these young people lift them higher 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 every day in jesus name and anywhere we go, anywhere we meet them, in a taxi, in the bus, in the school, I say, that's a deeper life man there. That's a deeper life girl there. That's a deeper life a brother there. I pray, Lord, they will carry deeper life everywhere in Jesus' name. I pray superlative life, surpassing life, supernatural life, a greater life, a higher life, a bigger life, a deeper life, heavenly life, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Everywhere you go, you will be unstoppable. 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 And I pray, Lord, no sickness in the brain, no sickness in the body, no sickness anywhere. Sickness, sicknesses cannot be in deeper life. I command you, sickness, come out in Jesus' name. And all those oppressing spirits and all that, I'd crush everything right now. And I pray that deeper life boys and girls will march unstoppable and nothing will hinder you. And you get to that place we're going to in Jesus' name. And when the day of rapture comes, when the day of rapture comes, and when the dead shall rise and the saints of God shall go marching in, none of you here will be missing on that final day in Jesus' name. And then all these beautiful songs we are singing now, all of us, not all of us will become members of the choir in heaven. They will sing and sing and sing and rejoice and they'll say where are they coming from they say those are the young people they came from the deeper life on earth and they brought higher life to heaven that's why we're singing in heaven it will pray it will happen to every one of us in jesus name that spirit that conquers i transfer to you that spirit that overcomes i transfer to you the spirit that brings deeper life, higher life, greater life, I transfer to every one of you in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm it in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you still there? Are you still there? I said in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and God bless you.